Hi, my name is John Storms, and today I am featuring my big red button. So, this is my big red button. It's 100 millimeters wide. It's kind of designed for an arcade game. And I always, I've seen in the past some of these big city displays where they got the, the pretty lady or the little kid that comes out. You know, they do a countdown and then they press the button and all the lights kick off. I always thought that would be kind of cool to have for my display. So, uh, last year, and I didn't put this in the display last year because I didn't get time to get around to it because RGB was pixels were a steep learning curve but I figured you know we'll play with this this year and uh, it's going pretty good so this is a hundred millimeter red LED button that I bought online I got the I have the link posted and then down here is a little enclosure for the actual switch which is just my light which is over here now this is actually the LED and the micro switch the micro switch is underneath my really bad soldering job but that's the micro switch and it kind of clicks into place with the light fixture and this little light housing here this little light bulb at the end pulls out see nice and easy make sure I get it back in right see it goes in there like this I think it's like that. All right, we'll find out. Um, so on the side are the connections for the LED bulb. And I have this hooked up to, it's a 12 volt DC, so I just took a 12 volt DC adapter, chopped the ends off, and solder it to the positive and negative leads. And then for the micro switch, I just simply have you know, some wires that I started on to the micro switch. So the micro switch are these two tabs, and then the LED are these two tabs. So I just solder the wires together, and I have the switch. And then the whole, the switch fits nicely inside this enclosure. It's a little bit of a puzzle. You turn it and you give it a little turn, and now it's all fixed in there. Now when I go to put this into like a control panel, I'll have a piece of wood here with a hole drilled so it fits this and then I can you know have some you know screw something on there to keep it nice and tight but for my purposes today this works out fine okay so what I want to do is I want to hook this up to my display now I'm going to take a little chance because I have a gadget that I bought uh, I think I bought this at Academy last year from the Laterama folks and what this is, is this is just a little board. It's an input board. And, you know, they have it set up so you could hook up an LED but with by hooking from, you know, elk here to a 330 ohm resistor to an LED and then back to ground. For the switches, it's actually pretty easy. Um, all you got to do is you have one of the switch go to ground right there. it down tight. <laughs> That's not tight at all. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Yep. And then you pick an input. So you have up to three inputs. So you can actually have you know like three different buttons attached if you want to. I'm only gonna have one. So I'm going to do is I'm going to take input, well, let's take input three here. I push the wire in there. And it also has a uh, five volt power, nine volt power. So if I wanted to, I could even power the light. I mean, it's a 12 volt light, but I could run the 9 volts up into the light and have it on. It, the only thing is, it would be on all the time. Okay? So I got that wired up with my whole light. So now, what I do is I come over here. Now, which one of these little boards you buy depends on the type of controller that you have. This is a um, 20 pin uh, board or dongle, daughter board, whatever you want to call it. 
and it goes right there on my Gen 3 Lightarama now. Probably should turn this off first. Yeah, safety. And then you install it so that it's facing inward. And there it is, nice and snug. Uh, turn it back on. And nothing blew up. That's a good sign. Alright, so what I'll do next is go over here to my computer. And right here I got that I have that controller up. And I'll go over here to test mode and click test input values for interactive. Okay, so it's saying inputs from Unity. So if I reach over and click on the button. See that? Every time I click it, two turns on. So that works out pretty, pretty dang well. So then you can go and you know in your uh, in the show editor, you can go and make that trigger do things. Okay. So that's one option is you can actually directly connect it up to your to your Lightarama device. Okay. Now. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to take this guy, gently pull him out, you know, little wiggles, little wiggles. And I'm going to disconnect because I'm going to show another way. So, this guy here, this one, the Gen 3 boards, is called the CTB HDR G3. So CTB header G3. Probably for their Gen 3 boards, but they have them for their older boards. They have a different one for the uh, industrial version of the controllers, which have the metal cases. So you pop around on their accessories page and you'll find what you're looking for. Now, my other toy is is the uh, Lightarama Input Pup. The Input Pup is kind of a standalone device here, but it works very much the same way. Now there is no powered outputs, okay, but it works very much the same way. Where I come in here and then do a ground. Actually I'm going to stick with black bean ground. I'm going to stick this one in the eight. it down tight. Okay, then I take the ground. I pop him in there. Like that. Now I hook him up to my Lightarama network. See that? And that solid light means it's actually talking to, you know, the, the computer. So, the reason that's important is uh, it, you can see that it's actually being powered off of the Cat5. Okay. So, when it's powered off the Cat5 like that, that means I have the powered uh, USB, R, I have the RS485 with booster. And it's get, getting, and it gets its power from the USB from the computer. So that's where this guy's getting his power from. All right, so that's the fort. That is my input button. So I come over here, and it has found my input button. And I say test inputs, which it's already set to. And now, if I go push the button, it should show up as eight. Okay. Now, like I said, just like on the, the little header board, I can map that to do something. So I can say trigger sequence or jukebox, there's all kinds of things. But what I want to do is I want it to kick off the show. Okay? So let me do, uh, let's see, I need to do one or two other things and then we'll start it back up. So one of the things I did is I took the red button, the thing that uh, the the power supply that controls the red LED, 
I hooked it up to a port on just a regular Lightorama controller. And what I did is I created a very simple animation where I have one circuit. It's, you know, this one channel goes to what I have the, uh, the red LED hooked up to, and I'm just fading it up and down, up and down, up and down. So I save that, and I call it Test Pulse. And then I set up, a, I took a little show that I had. I can find it. Here it is. And so I took that sequence and I put it in the background. And I call it Test Button Pulse 8.1 because it's on channel 8.1. And then I have my little startup and I got the Hallelujah bumper. Then it goes into the, the regular show. Okay. I have nothing set up on the, the interactive tab. Okay. I could. But here I want to use it to kick off the show. So I go up here to Options and I say. I can say the show starts immediately, which is what usually happens. That's your usual show. You can say show starts on a trigger. So I could say, you know, when I press the button, start the show. Or I can say the background starts immediately, but the rest of the show starts on a trigger. And that's what I want to do because I'm going to have the red button pulsing. And then when the show, when someone presses the button, the show will actually start. So now you say, okay, where's the trigger? And you get all these options. It's just my regular network is on controller 8 no 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 I have it that's uh, I have it hooked up hooked up to my input pup so that's on D now if I had it hooked up to my controller using that little mini board it would be 8 then I would put in whatever input I had it hooked up to but I have it on D on input number 8 okay so then I click OK I click on save I find my control panel icon, I right click, I scroll up here to show on demand, okay, and it says, well, when do you want it to start? And I say, I want to start right now, and I want it to be this show. That's the one that I was just looking at. So I click OK, and the show's starting. And look at that. The red button is pulsing, you know, just looking eager to be pressed to start the show. Okay, I have it hooked up to my input pup on input one. Oh, I don't have my light on. It's okay. So, if I go and press the button and it beckons me. I dedicate this house to the Claire. Griswold family Christmas. Drum roll, please. Start of the show. <laughs> that cool? Now one thing I need to figure out. I'll tell it to stop. Disable shows immediately. Get it to stop. So one thing I need to figure out is how to make it so that after someone presses the button, the button stops flashing. Uh, I have it on a background sequence right now, but there, I have some options. But essentially, the point of this is, is, you know, you can do some cool things interactively. I have another video where I go into some more of the options that you can do with the uh, the input device triggers. I'm there and I use the input pup, but there's no reason why you can't use this uh, the little uh, smaller boards as well. They do a fine job. So that's it. So now I can, I just need to build a nice little enclosure for my button and I'll have a nice big red button to kick off my show.